Melissa. Hi, Miss Scott. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. And how was your weekend? Uh, I wish I could say fun. I spent most of it parked behind a stack of books, trying to get prepared for today. Well, it is your first day of clinical experience. Tell me, how are you feeling about that? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't <laughs> nervous. Well, that's perfectly normal. Most of us were. Tell you what, come with me and let's go see the other nursing students and we'll have a pre-conference before we hit the floor. Will that make you feel better? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, let's go. Okay. So you look really tired, Mark. Yeah, I yeah. am. You know how when you go out, and you know and you, you have don't a lot do of work, work to do, yeah, <laughs> and you regret it the next morning. Yeah, but we're prepared. So I mean, we spent weeks preparing you're stuck for this. With cramp. You guys probably know each other. Melissa, this is Mark. Hey, hey. Melissa. Good morning. Good and this is Katie. Hi. Hi. So I thought we'd have a review before we hit the floor. You know, take some time to focus on the day's goals, and first of all, relax. <laughs> Now, our primary objective today will be vital signs, so let's review some key points. We're going to start with temperature and pulse. So, Melissa, tell me what's the most common way to take a temperature? Oral, because it's the easiest to use. Right, but you should avoid taking a patient's temperature orally if they had any type of nose or mouth surgery or if they're suffering from diseases in the oral cavity. And you shouldn't take an oral temperature if the patient can't close their lips around the thermometer. About how often and when should you take a patient's temperature? Well, say that depends on their condition and the hospital policy. But you should always wait about, oh, 15 minutes to a half an hour after the patient has eaten anything or had anything to drink just to ensure that you get an accurate reading. Now, let's talk about measuring a patient's Excuse pulse. Oh, that's okay. What's the most common pulse site for both children and adults? Uh, the radio pulse. That's right. And how are pulse rates measured? In beats per minute. Mm -hmm. And you, excuse me, you place your fingers, do you mind? Oh, not at all, go ahead. You place your fingers over the artery like this, so that the fingers are flat against the skin. Very good. Just be sure not to just press with the fingertips. Okay. And remember, you can use the same technique for other peripheral pulses, too. Mm -hmm. Melissa, how about respiratory rate, and how is that measured? By counting the number of breaths per minute. That's right, and you should also watch the depth and the rhythm of the breathing. Plus, it's always a good idea to move right from the pulse measurement to counting the respiratory rate so the patient isn't aware that you're counting their breaths. Is that because a patient may change their breathing habits if they know they're being monitored? Exactly, and that might cause the measurement to be inaccurate. So let's get started. Mark, why don't you and Katie go meet your patients, and I'll trail Melissa for a while and catch up with you a bit. It sounds okay. good. Great, thank <laughs> you. Have fun. Relax. Yeah. Um, 